When you think of the differences between a linear and switching regulator, what is the first thing that comes to mind? I'll bet you said efficiency. I mean, it was in the thumbnail. Here is a linear regulator and a graph showing its power dissipation as the load increases. And here's the same for a switching regulator. Pretty big difference, right? In short, the efficiency of a DC to DC converter depends on several factors. So measuring that efficiency across those factors lets you characterize how well it will work for a specific application. So in this video, we review what efficiency is, the various types of equipment you can use to measure it, how to measure it, and an example of automating that measurement. Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. My name is James. Let's go efficiently measure, or measure efficiency. All DC to DC converters dissipate some power. That plus the power out equals the power in. Dividing the two and then multiplying by 100 determines the efficiency in percentage. For example, 10 watts out while putting 15 watts in means the efficiency is 66%, which is pretty terrible. Seriously, power supply designers strive for a number in the high 90s, like 95 to 97%. Now, to measure it, you need a supply and something to measure both the voltage and current on the input, as well as a load, along with something to measure both the voltage and current on the output. One important consideration is where you place the ammeters. If they are on the positive rail, it is called a high side measurement, and if they are on the ground rail, it is called a low side. The problem with low side is that it means ground for the device under test, DUT or DUT, is no longer zero volts since the meter will drop some small voltage. It drops a voltage on the high side as well, but if your voltmeter is placed after it, then you can compensate for that voltage drop. Pretty simple, right? Now, ideally, you want to do the current measurement on the high side, and you want to make all four measurements at the same time. It is more efficient. So next, let's take a look at some tools you can use to do that. For the input side, the best suited tool is usually a bench power supply. Shocking, right? But seriously, anything that you can use to supply power can get you some measurements done. A bench supply usually has protections like current limiting, and it lets you quickly vary the input voltage. On the output side, I suggest an electronic load for maximum flexibility, but resistors or a resistor box can also be used as long as their power rating is high enough. Being able to change the load is very important, except if you have a unique application where your current draw is always constant. Measuring current and voltage brings a handheld multimeter to mind, but you need two since they can only measure one at a time. Or some bench multimeters can do a dual measurement. However, as this not at all annoying relay tells us, the meter is switching between voltage and current. It is not measuring simultaneously, but for a stable DC measurement, the switching is probably fine. Also notice the common input is shared. That means the DMM must be placed on ground or the low side when in dual mode. Now, with a four channel oscilloscope, you can easily measure the output and input voltages at the same time, along with the currents if you have a current probe. Now, I only have one, and that's why this example is over here and not over on the bench. Alternatively, if you build in a current sense resistor, then you can use a differential probe to calculate the current. However, four channel scopes that support active probes and the active probes themselves are not inexpensive. If you have them though, most oscilloscopes have math functions to calculate power and software to automate power supply measurements. Now, remember the first two instruments that I mentioned? They can measure power directly too. Both bench power supplies and DC electronic loads may have enough accuracy and resolution in their meters to replace a DMM or oscilloscope. For example, this high-end power supply and mid-range DC load have several digits of precision along with reasonably tight accuracy. Last is a combination of those instruments known as a source measurement unit or SMU. These are sources, loads, and a high-resolution DMM built into one box. To learn more about those, check out the Instrument Basics video I did on them. My last comment on getting equipped is to consider your goal. If you're eking out the last one hundredth of a percent of efficiency, then you need to step up your gear and avoid low side current sensing. However, a few digits of precision and a few millivolts of lost accuracy might be enough for comparisons. Speaking of measurements, let's go do one of those next. This DUT is a 3.3 volt switching regulator from Multicomp Pro. I'm using this power supply and DC load from 15 seconds ago. 
With this setup, I can set a constant current value, then math the power out and power in, and finally calculate the efficiency percentage. Or there is a slightly better way. In a previous video, I showed how to use PyVisa to automate test tools with Python to draw Bodhi plots. So I crafted together some more terrible Python code to automate the efficiency measurement. By the way, setting up and using PyVisa is a 15 to 20 minute video. So go check out that one if you want to know more details on that process. In short, you give this code a range of input voltages and load currents. Then it sets the electronic load to a value and cycles the input voltage by changing the power supply. Then it grabs the voltage, current, and power measurements from each instrument and uses those to calculate the DUT's efficiency. Since this measurement is focused on one aspect of the converter, I used a relatively long settling time to make sure we were not measuring the step response. Once the script finished, I copied the values into a spreadsheet and graphed them. I made a bunch of other efficiency graphs for this converter. Those plus the code is available on the Element 14 community page. Okay, so there's one more thing we should have done to improve this measurement that I mentioned way back at the beginning of the video. Looking at this setup, you might realize there is a lot of cabling. When we measure at the supply, we see six volts as expected, but at the converter's input, it becomes 5.965 volts. That is a 35 millivolt drop across the cable. So these cables are dropping some voltage, which the instruments have no idea about. However, both of these boxes have sense inputs on their back. These are a high impedance voltage measurement that allows each of them to compensate for the voltage drop across the cables connected to the front panel. For example, on the supply, it bumps up the voltage at its terminals to 6.055 volts, even though it is set to six volts. And now the input at the converter sees six volts proper. For a quick comparison, the graph on the left is the uncompensated measurement and on the right is compensated. It's not necessarily a night and day difference, but it is not exactly the same either. Now it should go without saying, but I'm going to say anyway, efficiency is only one of several measurements to make on a DC to DC converter. Just as an example, I modified the efficiency script a little bit to get this graph. It has the efficiency versus current like we've already seen, but then I added the output voltage of the regulator on the right axis. And see what happens after about 200 milliamps, while it is very efficient, the regulator is starting to drop below the 3.3 volts nominal. And it doesn't seem to matter if the input is six or 12 volts or I measured the voltage at the wrong point. Head over to the Element 14 community to find show notes to most, if not all of the tools I showed in this video, along with links to the other videos that I referenced. Remember that is the best place to ask questions because I am more likely to see and then be able to answer them over there. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to writing inefficient code to efficiently measure efficiency on my electronics workbench.